don't matter what your name is Share your story, well we waiting God, uh, 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 yeah, for the haters, whoa You ready? Yes Alright, what's up everybody and welcome back to For the Haters Podcast We are joined today by a special guest, Kayla um, For those of you listening that don't already know uh, my name is Becky I am your host um, I also have Laura here who is the writer and co-founder of for the haters hello hello <laughs> <laughs> um, Kayla thank you so much for joining us thank you for having me um, I am pretty notorious of saying let's jump right in so <laughs> <laughs> let's jump line. right in <laughs> yes. so let's uh, let's jump right in um, for those of li- that are listening that aren't watching um, they obviously don't have the automatic question that everyone does when they see you. Right. Um, so if you kind of want to just start with that and we'll get the ball rolling. Ball rolling. <laughs> All right. So I was in a terrific car accident July 21st of 2018. It left me with a broken neck, a broken clavicle, a broken wrist, and a brachial plexus injury, which means my arm is paralyzed. So that is why I wear the sling. And I wear that 24-7, never take it off. Um, Even when you sleep? When I sleep, nope. I will put it on a pillow and then take the strap off, but I will not take it out of the sling. Because in case I have to get up to go to the bathroom, I'm able to just put it on right away. Hmm. But I don't like it to just hang. Because if I don't have the sling on, it will just hang and just, like, dangle. Mm-hmm. So I have to wear it 24-7. And it's it's hard because it hurts my neck a lot. Um, I kind of have, like, bruises now, like, on my neck from wearing the sling. So... And this is fairly new. Yeah, it's been a year and four months, so very new for me. Yeah, and, and this is, you know, something that, you know, probably isn't as common as, no. you know, I think, you know, when you hear of traumatic events mm-hmm. and paralyzed, people don't automatically assume just one limb of your body. Exactly. But, but with yours, it it still is a complete change of your life. You have to learn, oh my God. relearn how to do everything. Oh, my God, yeah. It's like... um basically like a kindergarten again because i can't the, i my arm is my dominant arm that's paralyzed now just gonna ask so you that. yes so i had to learn how to write again with my left hand how to write letters and i felt like i was a child and i still feel like i'm a child because it's still hard to write and i have to learn how to do everything again it's like i'm just growing up again it's it's insane i mean what do you do what do you do for work i can't work um physically yet so that is that is out <laughs> unfortunately <laughs> no, yeah. i wish i could but i can't stand for longer than like five minutes yeah so and i'm in pain all the time so if i was able to go to work i would have to sit and i would have to i really don't know because i would just be in pain you know what yeah, i mean so, i mean e- e- so now that i think about it it's like you know you have to kind of figure out what that passion of yours is again yeah. anyway and mm-hmm. A year isn't enough time to figure that out. No. Like, I was thinking about, oh, maybe psychiatry or counseling, because that's something, like, I could probably do. Yeah. I could sit down and talk, you know, to somebody, but I just got to... You got to figure it out. Yeah, I got to figure it out. Um, what's the hardest thing for you now to deal with, you know, from the accident? Um, is it physical, the mental things that you have to deal with? Oh, definitely, for sure, because every day I wake up to my arm mm-hmm. not being able to work, so... Mentally, every day is a struggle for me. Um, And I think that's the main thing is when I wake up in the morning, I remember that, oh, my God, I can't use my arm. And so then for the rest of the day, I'm just sad. You Mm -hmm. know, I'm very I'm very sad person. Um, I try to be happy as I can be and positive because I'm still here today. But um, sorry, (laughs) but I'm also very sad sad because I can't use my arm I can't Mm -hmm. pull up my pants by myself I can't do certain things that normal people do anymore so it's definitely a mental toll big now are these physical restrictions things because you just don't know how to do them yourself yet no I physically can't do it um I like if I, I can pull my pants up on my left side but on my right side I can't because I can't reach over um all the way mm-hmm. so I have to have help doing that and basically putting up my hair too I can't do because I don't have two hands and I haven't figured out yet how to do it with one hand because I've yeah. seen videos on YouTube of people doing it but I've tried and it's <laughs> come out of mess. Yeah, I can't imagine that that's <laughs> it's not come easy. out of mess no, that can't be a real thing no <laughs> I'm like, how'd you do that? It's just, it's crazy for me to think about, like, sitting here 
and hearing the things that you struggle mm-hmm. with because, you know, and it, like if I think of someone that, and, you know, shame on me for thinking this way, but if I mm-hmm. think of someone like, oh, they can't use their arm anymore, like, right. like it could be worse type of situation, that like, that is such a terrible way to look at it because. Oh my God, yes. You know, there there's so many little things that we don't think of that it. Mm-hmm. you know, it alters and changes. Oh, like, yeah. you know, I didn't think about being able to put up my hair. Mm-hmm. I don't really know what I would do if I couldn't because my hair is always you in a bun. That's Never how I used to be. I used, my hair always used to be up. Yeah. So, like, now it's like I have to ask for help to do it and it sucks. And, and like, even in, like, your physical state, it, mu- mm-hmm. it must be such a different mind process of things because, yes. you know, someone who is wheelchair bound, someone mm-hmm. who is physically disabled in more ways – you know mentally they need help and i feel like you probably feel like Mm -hmm. you should be able to do it by yourself because you have so much other things oh my god yes and i can't and yeah that's that's the problem that's crazy so it's also like nothing that you can really prepare yourself for like what were you supposed to do train yourself to be left-handed exactly in the in the unlikely event exactly were to have happened i never thought in 23 years that this would happen to me right and then it happened and now i'm just trying to deal with it and figure it out because i still I still don't understand, you know. Yeah. I don't understand it. Like, how how does this happen? And Is it something that you're still... So, every single day when you wake up, mm-hmm. are you consciously reminding yourself of what's happening? Like, yes. Like, at this point, it has not sunk in. It's not yes. registered. It has not su- sunk in yet at all. So, you wake um, up, feel normal, and then immediately are met mm-hmm. with the reality of your yes. life. When I realize that I can't lift my arm up in the morning, it's like, oh, my God. I can't lift my arm up. Like, what do I do? Wow. How am I going to wow. go through the day? Like, how am I going to go places? And that's another thing, too. Like, when I go places, I have to scope out the area to see, like, how, like, if I'm going to a restaurant, I have to see, like, if they have booths that I can put my leg up because I can't have my arm up for a long period of time either. So, like, I have to, like, just scope out everywhere I go now and have somebody with me at all times to help me with everything. And especially, too, because I have to be in a wheelchair when I go places um, because I can't stand for a long period of time, like I said before. So I have to always have somebody with me when I go out, and it's just, it's a shame, and Your still, independence is compromised. It's, it's gone. It's, like, gone. Yeah. It's pretty much gone because I feel like I'm a child again, and I feel like I have to have somebody assisting me at all times. Mm-hmm. So now, now, what mentally you know, you're here, right? Mm -hmm. Like you're still like taking it day by day. Like what mentally gets you through that? Like what mentally makes you get out of bed in the morning? Mm -hmm. You know, once that realization comes that your arm doesn't work. Um, I think, cause I think when I get up in the morning and I'm thinking to myself and I'm like, you know, you've been through so much in your life and you're just not going to let this bring you down and define you and define your life. You're going to just keep on going and stay strong as you can be and that's why I tell myself every day like you got this you you've you've survived everything you've been through you fought through everything this is not going to stop you from living your life so that's kind of what I tell myself every day I think to get this me is through. A, a good segue actually because mm-hmm. um when you had written in originally like yes. your, your story submission covered a lot of ground yes and I think I think you know this is the point where we maybe we'll talk about some of that. So okay. what what did you go through as a child that oh. you know you've had to overcome that's almost mm-hmm. kind of prepared you mentally for this? Like we talked oh, yeah. about physically, there's no way to have ever seen this coming. <laughs> but you know what no. was your childhood like? Oh, it was it was awful in school wise. Outside of school, it was you know okay. Um, I had a great home life, but at school I was bullied tremendously I mean every day from fourth grade all the way up to my senior year in high school I was bullied and people think oh no I know you weren't how were you bullied for that long and I'm like I was fourth grade I was literally taunted and people would walk around the halls and they would be like like they would do like a pregnant sign Mm -hmm. and they would be like this to to talk about like my stomach and they would call me piggy in seventh grade is what the name was um after that all the way up till 10th grade I was called piggy miss piggy even by my own friends um which is very sad because I wanted friends so bad that I allowed myself to continue to be friends with them even though they bullied me and taunted me um and I did a water girl for the football team as well 
and it's still kind of hard to talk about because it's like still sad that that happened to me um but the football players would be like go get me a cheeseburger I know you have some in your purse and in your locker and I would just sit there confused as to like why me like why and I tried committing suicide um about two times I've cut I've cut myself multiple times um self-harmed and then I finally I told myself my senior year because I didn't want to go to school I did not want to go to school anymore but my mom she was like no you're going like you're not gonna let them stop you from graduating high school and getting through it and she was definitely my biggest support system and um she got me through it all um oh my god it's emotional <laughs> no 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 yeah please. it's emotional talk. i haven't really talked about this in a long time we glad um, you, we're glad we're glad yeah. You <laughs> yeah so so um i told myself you know you're gonna graduate you're gonna walk across that stage and you're gonna tell them like you're just gonna look at everybody that bullied you and you're just gonna be like look i did it you know what i mean i, I did it and i just never let them get to me at that point anymore I'm just like you know what you are beautiful you are strong you are an amazing individual and I would tell myself that every day before I went to school in the morning of my senior year um and I would still get bullied but it's crazy because I'm like I'm 17 years old I'm still getting bullied like how old are you like you know what I mean Mm -hmm. like why are you still acting like that but it, it is it is what it is it happens um but I told myself you know you're a fighter, you're a survivor, you're strong, and you're going to overcome this. And I did. And I think that's what has helped me to this day is the strength that I've gotten from what I've been through. So I have all that strength now to get through the days today. Hmm. So It's character building. Yes. For sure. Yes. It's such a, a lot. <laughs> no, it, yeah, yeah, I mean, and it's such a shame because – you know, how many people are adults now yes. that put other people through what they did when they were younger? Oh, my God. And, you know, sometimes we we might think it like mm-hmm. you, as people that an apology won't mean something for something that happened 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. But I feel like if there are people out there that like know they had put someone through something, yes. even if it is like imagine if the these people that specifically mm-hmm. were in your mind that put you through this reached out now and mm-hmm. apologized and recognized what they did i feel like it would still mean something i actually had somebody the cheeseburger guy he actually did reach out and apologize to me about two three years ago yeah. um and and that did mean a lot because it was like you know I mean, it doesn't you, change it but it I, doesn't but it you know people realizing mm-hmm. what they did and taking ownership is exactly. a, is a huge a huge part of it exactly and i and i think that you know with saying that if if someone's listening that mm-hmm. you know there's something that they're not proud of they did when they're they were younger mm-hmm. you know you need to forgive yourself and for and ask basically for forgiveness, forgiveness. and if they don't you know that's let them choose that you know because right now they're probably struggling holding on to something right. that you know is 10 times harder harder than that no, I think you, I totally you can't agree. rewrite history, but I think no. you can write a new future. Exactly. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, I think that that's, it's important that both sides of, of that right. situation mm-hmm. come to whatever realizations are necessary. And it seems like totally you, you have. Like, yeah. let me ask you, like, <laughs> if he hadn't reached out to you mm-hmm. a couple of years ago, like, had you already forgiven him prior mm-hmm. to that? Or no. Or you needed that? I needed okay. that. I needed... I, I needed that apology okay to be able to kind of cope with that sure because i still that to this day like it it follows me because it's like i feel like oh my god like i can't eat because they're gonna people are still gonna call me fat or they're still gonna you know make the signs and the symbols and they're gonna say oh you're go get a cheeseburger like it still to this day bothers me I, I hate eating in public it's like the main thing but I actually have come to like I don't know how to explain it um but now when I go out I'm like you know what I'm gonna eat this pasta <laughs> I'm gonna eat it okay and if you don't like it then that's just that's your problem um but yeah so I it's, definitely need it's that such apology. a shame that like 
you had to bear the things that you did as a child to be yeah. able to, you know, be the strong person that you are. It definitely Cause sucks. Because like, it makes me think about, and not that you're not a phenomenal person now, <laughs> and maybe it, ma- it made you who you are, but the person that you could have been if these people didn't do that I to think you. about that all the time. Yeah. And and obviously, and like, I don't want to say that in the sense of like dwelling on the past and mm-hmm. dwelling on like, because you turned out the best version of yourself. Thank you. Yeah. And, you know, that that shows the power inside of you that you had of the th- all the things that you had to overcome. And that's, yes. you know, admirable, you know, in itself. Thank you. Yes. Um, you know, now I kind of want to still talk about now, mm-hmm. um, you know what what is your future like like what is it that you see as goals for yourself what is it that you want to do and change what what is it that you want people to know not to stop your life you know if something like this happens don't let it stop you like I want to go to college I want to get a degree and I want to be able to help other people and I don't want this injury and this disability to stop me so like if you have a disability out there don't let it define you and don't let it stop you from doing what you want to do in life Mm -hmm. as hard as it can be find that strength within and do what you need to do and do what you want to do and love what you want to do um, cause I know I, what I want to do and I want to be able to help people. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to fight every day and I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I just know I'm going to do it. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 23. 23. That's young. yeah. I, I'm a young age. <laughs> yeah. I didn't, I don't know why I didn't ask that <laughs> to begin with. And 23 is such like a, def, like that age is such a defining year. Yes. You know, mm-hmm. and so you were 22 one when this happened i was 22 22 i just turned 22 literally like two weeks before so (sighs) my own personal experience it it seems that um when disabilities are involved Mm -hmm. people don't seem to care to think about the extra step of things um even when friends are setting up something or Mm -hmm. you know like any life thing right (laughs) um and it's crazy because I feel like this is the first, this is, there's things being learned in every single episode, but mm-hmm. I feel like there's so many things that we've talked about and are going to continue to talk to, talk about that are more so mm-hmm. like learning points for everyone listening. Yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Definitely. And I don't think we've had that, like, it's like, you need to think about this. If you have someone in your life that mm-hmm. is disabled in some way, like, just have a little bit more thought when it exactly. like be a little bit more compassionate like mm-hmm. you know they have a much more difficult life moving forward like and if we mm-hmm. we as able-bodied humans can make that just a little bit better exactly then you know mm-hmm. do that like think it it really doesn't take mm-hmm. that much time that no. much out of you to just think a little bit more exactly into what what is going to happen and what is being mm-hmm. done. You know what? Let's talk about this because we actually have not yeah. talked about mm-hmm. what happened mm-hmm. that night. So, you know, tell us. I mean, we talked a little bit of, uh, right. know, <laughs> uh, behind the scenes, but, um, you know, take us take us back. Um, so basically I was celebrating my birthday um, and we were going home. And after that, I don't remember what happened. I just remember waking up in the hospital. But I was told that our car... F- um, flipped about three times and I was ejected and found 30 to 40 feet from the car. Um, and they thought I was dead at the scene. If the firefighter that found me didn't find me, I would have been fully paralyzed because he did like a C-spine thing on my neck. Um, so they said I was very, very close. Um, so I'm very lucky to be alive today because they all thought I was dead. They just, they were like, she's not breathing. Um, so it's the scariest thing to like hear, um, but it happened. And and for clarity, this is at the hands of a drunk driver. Yes, a drunk driver hit us. So we all had our seatbelts on too. That's the craziest part about it all. I had my seatbelt on and I still flew out the car. Wow. So so the impact. Wow. It was okay. very strong. Do you still talk to the firefighter? I do sometimes. I like yeah. to thank him a lot. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I don't want to be That's annoying. That I would, but like, yeah. yeah. But like, I just, I feel like if I don't, like, I don't know. Like, I just feel like I have to. Because I feel like because of him, I'm still here. Mm-hmm. And I'm not fully paralyzed. Um, the spine is such a scary thing. It is. 
I mean, there's no, there's no treatment. I mean, there's no like testing and and all of that, mm-hmm. but there's no go to treatments to fix it. Nope. And once it's damaged, it's damaged. Mm-hmm. Um, do you do physical therapy? I do, and I actually had a surgery back in November. Mm-hmm. Um, they took a nerve from my arm and my put it in my neck and put it in my arm. Um, but still, nothing has happened from mm-hmm. it um but i do go back in november to get an emg to see if any nerves have regenerated because that's what's supposed to do they wanted to get my bicep to start working like i can kind of move my shoulder and that's about it but i can't lift right. my arm right um but i do do physical therapy that i guess helps um but it still to this day has not really made my arm go up <laughs> yeah i mean so from my knowledge of it, it's, it's like not something that you can predict. It's, no. you know, you have, I think it's like a two year window of, mm-hmm. of if you get, um, function back in yeah. the, in the part that's affected. I think and so. then after that, the chances decrease quite a bit, um, to get any type of mobility back. Yes, and you are still so. within your two year window. Yes, I am. Okay. So, so there's hope. I'm hopefully, I'm hoping that the appointment in November is a good appointment. <laughs> you know, it's, you know, it's interesting. I, I, that comment just brought me back to when we, um, we interviewed Eric Legrand. Mm. Okay. And he, you know, and sometimes you talk to people that are in the situation of something, mm-hmm. you know, being paralyzed and they speak to like a higher power mm-hmm. about going to be able, like a miracle going to happen. Mm-hmm. And what the way that Eric spoke about it, he fully believes that he's going to walk again because of, of, of medical reasons, though. He believes that there's going to be some type of breakthrough mm-hmm in the medical field, commu- right. in the medical field or community that's going to allow him to walk again. Not that he's a very like, religious person as well, but mm-hmm. but he had like he fully believes that you know at the in the advancement of technology mm-hmm. that there's going to be something. But it's amazing that he has that like much positivity about yeah. it. Like tremendously amazing. positive yeah, he's person. Like, trem- <laughs> <laughs> Tre- yeah. I mean like that's so oh, good. He, he, more he, than like, most. I'm getting like chills thinking about it. He right. like <laughs> He, like, spoke to it as, like, he wouldn't, he wouldn't walk again to give up the things that have come from it. Right. Um, and that's not, that's not saying that you're similar, your situation yeah, similar. Yeah. He, he spoke to, like, his family, you know, not being the great, like, the greatest of a family mm-hmm. until the accident and it brought them all together. And that's something that he says that nothing is worth more than you know what he got from that so Mm -hmm. and and that's important too i mean you you're you have so much gratitude you know especially towards your mother that oh yes (laughs) that like that gives you a a lot of strength to continue on and when and that's something we've noticed too throughout the people we've talked to is when you have gratitude for people in Mm -hmm. your life and gratitude for the things that you do have it makes you, you know, it makes you see life a little bit, Different. a little bit differently. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, is there, is there anything else um, that helped you get through the things that you had to overcome, whether that be when you were being bullied as a kid mm-hmm. or, or now, what are things that you actively work on for, you know, your mental health side mm-hmm. of things? Um, well, this is crazy, but, um, I never believed in really, I guess, a higher power, you can say, but when the accident happened and I told my mom this and I tell, I told like my family this, um, my aunt and uncle, they passed away um, a couple years ago and when the accident happened and I'm telling you like it, I believe in so much now hmm. and I think that's what gets me through every day, um, that there is something up there. I woke up because of seeing my aunt and my uncle. They told me to go back. And I saw, like, a bright, bright light. And, I I mean, and I still, like, I think about it every day. And they told me, go back. What are you doing here? And I woke up. Wow. I mean, and it gives gives me the chills every time I think about it. And I'm like, how did that happen? Like, this is there there is something up there like so i kind of like i think about that every day and i'm like 
That's crazy. I'm like, there's something up there. You know, there's a there's a God or something there. You know what I mean? And he's obviously I'm here for a reason. They wanted me to come back. So I kind of live with that every day. I don't impose my views on anyone because I don't think that that's what anybody should do. But I, I happen yeah. to agree with you. <laughs> so, I mean, that's and I just like I kind of got chills from that. I think that. That's even crazy. I'm yeah. living in an afterlife, so I can see that happening with with or without there right. being some type right. of right, 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 something. Yeah. I'm gonna give yeah. you hope. It doesn't that matter, definitely doesn't matter what you call hope. it. Right. Definitely. Right. Right. It right. definitely gives me hope. Like every day, I'm like, oh my god, like that I think really it just happened. sort of like reassures us all that there's an actual purpose here. Yes, exactly. And that's that's all we need to to kind of move on. Yes. Have you ever seen a medium? No, and I want to. Ugh. I want to so bad. <laughs> I want to know like. My future I, I kind of feel like you something. don't have to. I mean, you, yeah, you like saw your aunt and uncle. That's amazing. That's amazing. It's kind of like I did, but I really I want to see one. She's, my mom's like, no, you're not going to, because what if something bad comes up? And I'm like, wow, listen, I've been through a lot already. I think I can handle it. <laughs> are, are mediums, like, known for having predictive powers? Or is it um, more just it like... Depends, it depends okay. on where you go to. Mm-hmm. Interesting. I went to a really good medium. And really? I've been to I've been to probably five or six. Really? Okay. And... <laughs> five of them let's say I went to six and five of them you know I always went looking for uh, my best friend passed away three three years ago oh, I'm so sorry and that's what I always went to go do was look right. to talk to him and so anytime I went to these mediums it was it always felt like they were just convincing me of someone that's passed that they were there mm-hmm. and then they go on to the next topic like so it was just like Okay, I believe you now, and then mm-hmm. go on. Like they never gave me right. answers. Mm-hmm. Um, this other, this last meeting, I just went to her not that long ago, mm-hmm. and it was the most amazing experience of my life. Really? Yeah. I'm gonna have to get the name of the person. Yeah, she <laughs> she's um she's a healing medium, so Ooh, she necessarily okay. doesn't talk about someone that's passed unless it's important for you healing and moving forward. Right. So like if you don't have someone that's passed away. She's not going to talk about them. Like, she, she's going to talk about life things and, like, oh. your future and what you have to look forward and to. And that's what I need. Hmm. So I'm going to go there. <laughs> yeah. She's, like, bu- she's out in Philly, so. Oh, that's not far from me, so. <laughs> We're going, Mom. <laughs> or on your way home. Honestly, right? <laughs> I don't know when this is going to get released, but um, we're trying to get her to come on really yes yeah because oh be yeah, so awesome. she focuses on like healing and that's important to us that would be cool regardless if you believe in that stuff or not mm-hmm. if it gives you strength to exactly. move forward yes there's no reason to not have that like mm-hmm. inside you right. gives me strength so hey yeah <laughs> absolutely Sorry for that tangent, but <laughs> no that was like <laughs> i don't think it's a tangent at all i think i think right. that's the kind of conversation that somebody listening might need to hear yes Sorry. Sorry. I know if I was listening to it, I would want to hear it. Because <laughs> yeah. I'd be like, "What medium was it?" <laughs> I'll have to. I'll have to. We'll have to think about doing like a separate, like special podcast where I talk about my experience because, like, it was that'd be cool. Wild. We like, should have really? her come on and like read someone. Yes, yeah. that would be awesome. You could, you should come back. And right, we can have her right. Read it could you. be me. <laughs> See, <laughs> two birds, one stone. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Yeah, got awesome. it done <laughs> everyone's gonna now like reach out like who's the medium uh-huh <laughs> give her a little free press yeah, right she's in the, she's actually in the process of opening a healing center oh so that maybe sounds by then, good i'll have to ask for permission to give her information out but right um but yeah so back to back to, <laughs> back the to you <laughs> back to me <laughs> <laughs> what were what were the first um you know moment what were the first couple weeks like for you awful (laughs) it was it was pretty bad because well when I first like woke up and everything and like the three days I was in the trauma unit I really didn't like know like what happened to me and I didn't really understand that my arm was paralyzed Mm -hmm. um but then when I got to the rehab center that's when it all hit me and I was like oh my god like my arm is paralyzed and I couldn't wall really walk and everything and it was just bad be- yeah. It was just it was just bad because I didn't know that this was going to happen to me and then it happened to me and then I had to live with that and I, I can't even like explain it. I can't mm-hmm. even explain how I felt during that time because it was just horrible. It's horrible. I'll ask you something that I asked earlier yeah. that I made a note of. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, to, today or even back then, even in the first few weeks. Yes. 
Is it more physically challenging or more emotionally challenging? Emotionally. Okay. Definitely emotionally. That's what that's what they say um, mm-hmm. at rehab facilities is that mm-hmm. ni- it's 90% mental oh, and yeah. 10% physical. Hmm. Because your mind is just like going in circles mm-hmm. all day long and you're questioning everything and you're wondering why me? Why me? Why is this? Why can I move my arm? I can't move my arm. I can't move my arm. So like it's just it's a very emotional roller coaster like my ex-friend said Mm -hmm. um so yeah can i ask like like you to describe exactly Mm -hmm. what is it like a phantom limb like i've heard people say that it's sort of like it's like a phantom yeah it's like um it's it's the nerve pain but they call it i think they call it the phantom the phantom pain and i get nerve pain all throughout my arm and through my hand and it's the worst in my hand and i'm in pain now like it's like shocks and shocks and it feels like you know not to be like weird but like it feels like your nails are being like ripped off oh my god um and yeah, so nerve, it's a nerve pain is it's like her, the worst it's bad honestly that's oh eye-opening god. for me and maybe yeah. people listening because i always just assumed that mm-hmm. there was a numbness oh, you no. just feel no. nothing no uh-uh. it's you have a lot of nerve pain mm-hmm. and i mean i haven't been not in pain in a whole year i've been in pain every day for a year and four months so it's like i'm getting used to it but then, then it's like I should not be able to be get used to it. Like, Are you on medication for I it? Am. Yeah. I am. I, I just, I mean, obviously I know it from my yes. personal experience, mm-hmm. but I know that it screws with, like, um, you, like, going to the bathroom instead. Like, but mm-hmm. it wouldn't really affect your lower half because you feel your lower half. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Um, but, yeah, I, I know that there's, there's medicine for it. And mm-hmm. it's crazy, and, like, this isn't comparable mm-hmm. by any means, but I have a herniated disc, and... Mm-hmm. It's, like, pressing so hard that I get nerve pain in my oh. hip now. And, it like, I just couldn't imagine it oh just being, like, constant. Like, all, and in your yes. fingertips. Oh, my God. That's yeah, the worst. That's, yeah. I hated it before. Like, before this happened to me, when I would get my, like, tingles in my knee, I would hate that. And, like, now I'm, like, it's every day. Yeah. And it's not even just tingles. It's, like, electrocution. And, like, it, it's burn sometimes. It feels like it's on fire and I can't do anything about it. Yeah. And it's just awful. Like, Can I ask a science related question that yes. neither of you probably know the answer to? <laughs> maybe maybe, maybe you do. <laughs> maybe you do. Um, the fact that you feel pain mm-hmm. would suggest that the nerves are somewhat alive. That's what they say. So is that a good sign? They say it's a good sign, um, but they also say that this happens a lot okay. with. Um, injuries like this even it could never work and you would still feel pain there's a lot of people that um lost their arm fully and they still have the pain that they're like they the arms there it's not so yeah that's so crazy it's it's scary i'm like oh (laughs) (laughs) have have you ever have you ever talked to someone that's in the same position as you no Hmm. and i want to and it's hard to find somebody that i feel like i would connect with I mean that's what you know. that's what we stand for like mm-hmm. here right like we truly believe that all we need to know is someone who's gotten through the same yes. thing that we like to give them give ourselves a light at the end of the tunnel mm-hmm. right um so if you're listening right. and you know Seriously. someone cuz it, it's important it's it's really imp- we we need to guide each other through our own struggles and that's the only way is as humans that we're, we're able to get through anything mm-hmm. is is speaking to someone that's gotten through it. You yes. know, you can have a random person tell you a million times that things are going to be okay. It gets easier, but unless they've been through it, like it's not it's, the same. And, and they mean well, and you mean they well. Do. I, mean, I, yeah. I say to people all the time. You know, I give my advice to people mm-hmm. that of things that I've haven't gone through, but you don't come like compared to like it's yeah right. like i, I have, have no right clearly. to tell you that everything's gonna be right, okay right, right. so i'm not going to <laughs> yeah you know, i feel like i, I would appreciate be speaking out of it but it's like you haven't been through it so it's right. like you don't and really if you, know if, if, and if you're in that like wrong mental state in that mm-hmm. like moment of time where someone's trying to give you motivation or advice you yeah. just want to be like f off like, right stop yeah. talking please like, don't, don't tell me <laughs> like please. i'm going to be okay like you have no clue especially when they say oh it could be worse i'm like listen this is my worst <laughs> yeah we sure. this yeah. is my we worst talk, we talk about we've talked about that before too mm-hmm. that um it, it's a seesaw right it's yes. it's really good to have a mindset of it could be worse mm-hmm. but it also doesn't take away from the things that you're going through no. and, and a lot of the time people are sitting too hard on one side and and they <laughs> don't let people feel pain or anger because of you know they're 
being people that have it 10 times worse but yes you know and we talk about that a lot like you're justified in your feelings it could mm-hmm. be i stub my toe and i'm really upset about it like i could be justified in that mm-hmm. if, if it's hurting me it's hurting me and people need to learn how to be a little bit more compassionate you know in that sense they really yeah. do they really do um and, it's and finding it, that balance yeah yes. i mean it, and it goes back to what i don't want to <laughs> like be a turning wheel is that what it's called when you, like, repeat yourself? <laughs> broken record? Ah. Yeah, let's say broken, broken record. record. <laughs> Turning wheel. I, no, I guess that, that works, too. Right? right it does. But, like, if, if you're... <laughs> Turning wheel. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I'm going to leave that in. I love that. Um, <laughs> but, it, like, if you know someone that's, like, going through something, you know, like, just try to make it a little easier for them. Please. Yeah. <laughs> I, and like people just don't it's just like simple things that people don't think of like the access the accessibility of things and Mm -hmm. just yeah and like don't not count someone in because of their disability like let them choose oh my god yes i feel like you have a story or something (laughs) yes because do you feel like you've been excluded because of this of co- uh, yes, tremendously. I mean, I mean, like, sh- a, a separate from the friendship that was obviously. Yes, like, no, separate okay. from that. Um, I have other friends and other things that like will go out and do stuff and not invite me anymore, and they'll be like, "Oh well, I didn't know if you would be able to do it," and I'm like, "You could just ask me, and I can answer that for myself and decide for myself if I can do that or not." Mm-hmm. Um, so that's kind of yeah. Mm. <laughs> I mean, like, what are they asking you? They're not, like, asking you to throw shot put, right? Like, I mean, it's, like, Like, we're just going out. Like, come on. I can go out. Like, come on. It's just not fair. I feel like it's not fair. It's not. And it it sucks because, like, it's something, it's, like, so easy just to, like, be a little bit more thoughtful. Mm -hmm. Just ask. And then if I say no, I say no. But, like, just ask Have you addressed that with them? Yes, I have. And they still do it. (laughs) Okay. So the response is not very good. Yeah, (laughs) no. (laughs) They didn't really, um, what's the word? Reciprocate. Reciprocate. Yeah. Look at you, Beck. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> My, the turning wheel stopped. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> um, I want you to kind of talk to us about mm-hmm. your experience with, um, I know that you've done some public speaking. Yes. If you could kind of talk about that and your experience, because we, d- like, have done public speaking mm-hmm. and, you know, that's, it's I love it. Like I mm-hmm. like the power that you get from helping like visually oh, it's an amazing seeing, feeling. helping someone. If you want to kind of talk about that. Oh yeah, of course. Um when I did the tour I did, I would get on stage and I would share my story and that was like the first that was the first time I was able to like talk about it, you know, without, you know, cuz talking to myself, I was able to talk to like 500 people per se that were there and share my story and talk about it and get it all out on the table and I like it's different because like I don't know them so it's like how can they judge me but they can still judge me but I was like comfortable to do it and I just felt so empowering and the response that I would get from doing it was just amazing it would make me feel so amazing and like give me so much strength and ability to just keep going because I know that I'm doing something good I'm helping others and you know like I said earlier about the girl with the razors and everything like that like to get that response that I've helped somebody stop to self-harm and to not commit suicide it's just an amazing feeling mm. and I loved doing it and I really want to get back into it because I, it really helps you especially when mm. you're going through something if you help somebody else it's like you feel so amazing inside so I definitely want to get back into it. Yeah, so. it's such like an indescribable feeling. It is. It's like just helping people through words, you know, and yes. through like your own personal struggles. Yes. I said this to a couple people in the past couple weeks. Um, I don't know if you saw. I, I just recently mm-hmm. people reach out to me all the time. Right. Um, but recently, more so, people have been reaching out to me in the sense of that aspect, like that I've saved their life, um, that, you know, they were going to commit suicide and because of something I said they didn't. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, I want people to know, Mm -hmm. and you're a living proof of this is that someone that is going through something that you went through younger needs you. 
right? Yes. Like there's someone out mm-hmm. there that needs to hear that they're going to be okay from yes. it. It's always good to know somebody cares. Mm-hmm. And and because Sorry. you got through everything and you've helped mm-hmm. many people yes. survive and every single person has that ability mm-hmm. and people need to understand that right maybe not at this moment in life you feel like you've helped someone but getting through that darkest moment is what you're going to need to help someone and someone is going to need that help yes you know your the things that you went through like someone else can't explain like you're the only one that can show people that and and tell your story Mm -hmm. and you know that's what that's that's why we're here yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> you you know why story. we're here more than than most people because yeah you've, you've done it firsthand oh my god yeah share my story get it out there and hopefully i inspire somebody that's listening to this hopefully i help inspire somebody more people exactly mm-hmm. you know and i hope somebody finds the strength from just listening to me you know or just treat somebody else a little kinder exactly because exactly. Of, of this so mm-hmm. i mean it's even It's crazy because I learned, like, unexpectedly, and I don't know why I don't (laughs) think I'm going to, but, like, every single person I talk to, it, like, makes me such a better human. Like, it it makes me think about something that I didn't before I had this conversation Mm -hmm. with you. Right. Which just shows that a conversation is so important it is. to have about about these things. It really is. Even, like, the things you were saying in the beginning, you know, are things that I'm going to think about, Mm -hmm. you know, like, do you go? Do you go to like um, OT at all? OT, um, I did, but not anymore. Mm-hmm. So, for we've talked about OT before with Eric, mm-hmm. and like the difference between physical therapy and occupational ther- therapy mm-hmm. is um, occupational therapy explains like life things. Yes. Um, opposed to the physical aspects, mm-hmm. it like reteaches you how to do things. Yeah. Um, I actually don't know the difference between mm-hmm. physical therapy and occupational therapy. So, what types of of things are you doing in OT or have done in OT? And the muscles, like you're of, riding okay. a bike and they're lifting your arms up in the air and doing exercises with that. So that's basically what that is. That's how do you like? So as I'm also right-handed, so it's right. lucky. So oh, I, we would all understand what it, yeah. how you know disastrous mm-hmm. this could be, but. Do you feel, I mean, of course it's only been a little over a year. Yes. Do you feel as though your left hand has actually gotten stronger? Oh, yeah. Okay. So, like, I you... use it for everything. So, it's like, I feel like it is strong. Okay. <laughs> and it can do a lot more than what it used to be able to do. <laughs> so, so, you feel like you have yeah. control over Not it. really. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's really hard to write. So, I mean, I like, to write the letters, it's like, how do I write my A? How mm. do I write my B? Like, it's it's so hard. It's crazy to just even, like, think, like, how that can just happen, like. You know, it's it's crazy because, like, like, the time that, like, the time that this all happened, Mm -hmm. you know, it's not like it happened when you were 12 or 15 where, like, you still have that growing to do Mm -hmm. and can, like. Adapt a little bit better. Adapt a little bit better. You know, 21 is is basically when you start your real life. Yes, for sure. And so, you know, you're sent on this curveball of of you know figuring it out with a little bit of a disadvantage mm-hmm. a lot <laughs> a lot of disadvantage, disadvantage yeah. yeah oh my god <laughs> it's crazy to just to sit and think about it like everything that i said and everything like i'm thinking about it now and i'm like oh my god i've really been through a lot but i'm still here and like i'm still fighting and like i'm a survivor so it's just crazy to think about <laughs> yeah um do you have your phone it's over there it's, it's on the uh, shared one um, all right, guys, we are doing a new segment that we hope to bring into this season. Um, we're going to get some questions from our community that to ask our guests. Um, so we posted something about Kayla for people to ask, and it, it's locked. The phone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, cool. So we have our first questions. We're going to keep the questions an, uh, unanimous because just in case someone wants to ask one that doesn't no, want. <laughs> say, that again. Say, say that line again. <laughs> <laughs> you want to say unanimous? Turning wheel. Yeah. Um, not, yeah not um, we're going to keep these questions anonymous because um, just because if some Did I say it wrong? Again? Anonymous. 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 Say, say anonymous. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Can you keep this in, please? <laughs> 
Anonymous. Mm-hmm. All right. We're going to keep these questions anonymous because we want people to feel comfortable asking a question if, uh, even if their identity is kept a secret. Um, okay, cool. So first question. Actually, I'm going to save this one last because this one's a hard one. Oh, um, <laughs> the first question I'm going to ask is, what is your biggest fear? Do you have more because of the accident? Getting into a car. Every time I get into a car, I have to close my eyes. Hmm. Literally. I cannot have my eyes open because I feel like if I see something, like, coming, I'm going to get hit. Even though I don't remember the accident, yeah. it's like my body does. And, like, my all of a sudden, every time I get in the car, my eyes just automatically close. And I have to have a blanket with me and everything for comfort. Like, it's just, yeah. So you drove two hours to get here. Did you yes. keep your eyes closed the entire time? Yes. <laughs> Yes. That's commitment. Yes. She's like, are you asleep or you sleep? I'm like, no, I'm just <laughs> can't open my eyes. Wow. Hmm. Um, it's scary. I want to ask a question. I hope it's not insensitive. Mm-hmm. Um, is it, or do you have the ability if like legally to be able to drive with one arm? Like if you wanted to? I th- I'm not sure. I think I've seen a lot of people with this disability, like with one arm um, that do drive. So yeah. I think I would be able to. I just have to take it up, I guess, with my surgeon and like make sure I'm like okay to do it. Is that something that you would want to do in the yes. future? Yes. <laughs> I want to drive again. <laughs> I miss you'd, it. You'd have to open your eyes though. <laughs> oh, yeah. <of> okay. <laughs> <laughs> my eyes will be. That's the only thing too. I have to, you know, be okay with that yeah. before I can even start driving because I can't be on this jerk. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> hello. <laughs> Yeah. So. All right. I think that answers it. Yes. <laughs> um, what is your hardest day-to-day task? Huh. That's a hard one. Um, I feel like it's not really a task, but like waking up every day because I'm being reminded of my arm not working. And so I feel like waking up is a really hard struggle. It's because, like, sometimes I don't want to wake up. You know what I mean? But I find that strength to do so. And I do it. But, yeah, I think that's... Do you see Do you um see a therapist? I do. Okay. I do. And she's very lovely. And she helps me out a lot. <laughs> but, you know, it's not a cure for all. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? So, yeah. Hmm. I think that's the main thing. <laughs> awesome. Hardest task for me. Okay, we have two more questions. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think which one I want to ask first. Okay. All right. Um, was there someone you had to forgive that caused the accident that occurred? Um, there was, but I did not. I still, to this day, do not forgive that person. Is there is there anything that they could do to? At this moment, I don't think so. No. No, because I don't... I'm not really... I, I didn't really come to terms yet with my arm not working so it's like until I come to terms with that and like life I just can't forgive her hmm. so yeah this question is similar to it it was mm-hmm. um do you forgive your former bullies or do you carry them with you I I do forgive them now because they give me the strength that I have today Mm-hmm. So if it wasn't for them, like as hard as it sounds like to say, it's like if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah. And I wouldn't have the strength that I have. So I do. I thank them for that. Yeah. It's you a very I mean? important takeaway because there's gratitude yes. to be found in tragedy. Mm-hmm. And I just want, you know, yes. that's a very good point. I'm glad you said that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, we are coming to a close. Um, what we like to do with our guests mm-hmm. at the end of every episode is get a word of advice uh Mm -hmm. for anyone listening there's a million different words of advice i'm sure that you could give (laughs) but um if there's something that you want to say if you're listening out there and you're trying to find you know the strength to be okay and live every day you just gotta reach deep inside and really believe you know in yourself and believe in life and just tell yourself that it's going to be okay whether or not it might not be you got to tell yourself you know it's going to be okay and I'm going to get through this day and I'm going to fight until I win this battle because it's a battle and you know anything that anybody's going through it's a battle and you're you're got to fight every day you know but you will overcome it and you will survive and because I feel like that's what I have done I've survived you know everything that I've been through in my life so 
you know, just keep fighting. That's the main thing. It's just fight. And one day you'll be okay. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like. <laughs> that was so, great. Thank you. Laura, do you have any final comments? I, I think you said everything very... <laughs> I mean, really, I feel like I've just sat here this entire time, like, nodding my head for those who can't see. So, I'm... Those I'm, of you that can. For those... <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I think, I, think, I, think, I think your entire perspective mm -hmm. is refreshing. Yeah. And your faith in, in both yourself mm -hmm. and in a higher power and in your future. Yes. And, and things that you can control and can't control, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's amazing. And for anyone listening, I, I just hope that you, you know, that they, they take everything I that you so have too. to offer I really hope and, so. and adopt it themselves because it's, it's amazing. Thank you. I hope so, too. Hope I can help somebody. You absolutely will. Um, You've helped us already. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you. For yeah. what it's worth, in <laughs> all seriousness. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, thank I, you. I would agree. We, with you know, that. we learned too. I think this is kind of, you know, mm -hmm. my actual final word will will be this. <laughs> I, you know, I, I we're not just like the the co hosts of this right. show. We're young mm -hmm. and 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 have gone through things and are learning from all of you. Of course. So it's you are you know it's so refreshing to to talk to people who. Mm -hmm you know, leave us with thoughts on the ride home right. or you not know, for Becky, but for me, you know, <laughs> really. I, and I, yeah, and I yeah. do think about it and I reflect on what you guys say. So this is, this has been very great. Right. Yeah. It's, it's really good to be back and to be recording again because it's, you know, it's things like this mm -hmm. and meeting people like you that are just a reminder of why we're, why we're doing this exactly. and, and what we're doing. Um, I love it. <laughs> so thank you so much for, you know, taking the time to drive here to come and talk to us. Thank you um, for having me. Yes. I've been so excited. I've been waiting for this day. I'm very happy this day has come. So thank you. Hopefully, it, hopefully it turned out as good as your hopes, but um, it did. It did. <laughs> um, but yeah, everyone that's listening, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, remember to subscribe to our channel, to follow, to like, to comment, to share. Um, if this story resonates with you or think it resonates with someone else, please share it with them. Uh, you know, every single person and every single new person that we get to join our community is another person that we can help. So please make sure to share, listen, and we'll talk to you guys next week. <laughs> Bye, everyone. Bye. For the haters, for the haters, come on to it now or later. Whoa, uh, uh. It don't matter what your name is, share your story, we'll be waiting, God.